With the exception of recent mobility problems, the Queen has been a model of health for most of her 96 years, but her family has been less fortunate. Other members of the royal family have a history of more health problems than you might imagine. Members of the British and European royal families suffered from various illnesses, both psychic and physical. Fortunately, many managed to win their struggles. Let's take a look at when members of the British royal family talked about their health together. Herzegi Sasses has always been outspoken about her mental health issues, but did you know that Prince Harry's wife also suffered from terrible migraines? I used to have debilitating migraines, I was hospitalized for them, and acupuncture and oriental medicine completely changed my life, Meghan Markle said in an interview. The Queen's granddaughter was diagnosed with dyslexia at the age of seven. She received specialized help and support from the Helen Arkell Center throughout her schooling and became a patron of the charity in 2013. I would not have been able to achieve my academic results without the support I received from the center, said Beatrice, who successfully passed her eight final exams and graduated from Goldsmiths College in London. Princess Eugenie recently spoke candidly about her scoliosis. At age 12, she was told she would have to undergo life-changing surgery to correct a severe curvature of her spine. During the eight-hour surgery, two metal rods were inserted along her back and two screws were attached to her neck. Eugenia spent three days in intensive care, then a week in a ward and six days in a wheelchair before she could walk again. There are so many emotions and worries that go thundering through your head. Would I be able to exercise, or would I look the same, or would I miss a lot of school and fall behind? I remember getting angry because I couldn't run and play, the princess recalled. The countess opened up about the fact that her daughter Louise had vision problems as a child. Louisa, who was born prematurely, used to have cosiglisis, a condition in which a person cannot align both eyes at the same time. Premature babies often have strabismus because the eyes are the last thing to develop in the womb, Sophie said. Her strabismus was pretty deep when she was a baby, and it takes time to correct it. You have to make sure one eye doesn't become more dominant than the other, but she's fine now, her vision is perfect. Sophie Wessack, has since become a patron of the International Agency for the Prevention of Blindness. Prince William and Prince Harry's mother suffered from bulimia when she was young. Former royal chef Darren McGretty talked about her eating disorder, admitting that he suspected something was wrong even then. I never talked about the food I cooked for her, and I never will. I think that's right, Darren said. But you know, I used to cook food for the princess. I always wondered why in the world she needed all that food, but I couldn't help it. I was the chef there, my job was to cook the food. I wasn't a psychologist or a doctor who could tell you that you shouldn't eat all that stuff. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know or understand what bulimia was. Princess Diana first revealed that she suffered from bulimia in Andrew Morton's book Diana, her true story in 1992. On the afternoon of May 10, immediately after the opening of the regular session of Parliament, Prince William traveled to Manchester, where he and his wife, Kate Middleton, attended the opening ceremony of the Glade of Light Memorial. It is dedicated to the victims of the terrorist attack that took place at Manchester Arena on May 22, 2017. For the outing, Kate Middleton chose an outfit that was already in her closet. We saw this dark grey Michael Kors tweed coat dress on the Duchess of Cambridge in March 2017 during the opening of another memorial, to honor participants, both military and civilian, in the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan and the Persian Gulf from 1990 to 2015. If then Kate complimented the outfit with a blue hat, now, with dark blue suede high-heeled pumps, a purse of French brand Poulain to match the shoes and earrings in the form of bees and honeycomb. These earrings were chosen for a reason, bees are a symbol of Manchester. The spouses laid flowers to the monument and honored the victims with a minute of silence. The monument was designed as a result of an international design competition. At its center is a ring with a halo of white marble on which the names of the dead are engraved in bronze. Embedded in the stone are personalized memory capsules filled with memories and mementos of them provided by loved ones. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge then traveled to Manchester Cathedral for a private reception, where they met with the families of the victims as well as responders. Prince William and Kate Middleton, along with their older children, 8-year-old Prince George and 7-year-old Princess Charlotte, visited Wales as part of the celebration of Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee. It was decided to keep 4-year-old Louis at home, the boy is still too young to attend official events, although he charmed fans with his unorthodox demeanor and funny facial expressions during a recent appearance with his family on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. The Cambridges attended a concert rehearsal at Cardiff Castle. For the outing, Kate Middleton chose an orange eponine coat dress. She complimented her image with a black bag and pumps. 
Prince Charles and Prince George appeared in similar strict suits and blue shirts with the collar unbuttoned. The network users agreed that the eldest son of the Cambridges is becoming more and more like his father with age. Young Princess Charlotte was wearing a navy blue coat dress and sandals with white socks. Apparently, the Cambridge family will skip the birthday celebration for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's daughter, baby Lilibeth. The Sussex family is staying at Frogmore House and intends to share Lily's joyous celebration with Queen Elizabeth II. Yesterday, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle celebrated their daughter Lilibeth's first birthday. The little girl turned one year old. To mark the occasion, the couple organized a modest party at Frogmore Cottage. The event brought together royal cousins and siblings. Among them were Zara and Mike Tyndall and their children, Peter Phillips and his daughter, and Archie's godfather, Charlie Van Strawbenzi. The relatives met baby Lilibeth for the first time since it was her first trip to the UK it was a beautiful event, and it had everything you would expect from a baby shower. The idea was to have a relaxed atmosphere at the party, and guests could move around freely and leave at any time, a source told The Sun. A party will be held today in the capital of Wales to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. For the occasion, Kate Middleton, along with her children, decided to bake birthday cupcakes. The Duchess of Cambridge captured the touching moment in a photo. Kate shared new photos on social media showing Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis preparing treats for holiday guests in the kitchen. Baking cupcakes for the local community in Cardiff to enjoy at the Platinum Jubilee Street Party tonight. We hope you enjoy them, Middleton wrote. Fans appreciated the efforts of the young heirs, what beautiful children. Thank you so much for sharing your weekend with us. Beautiful moments with the family. Adorable kids. The cutest kids. Baked goods made by kids taste even sweeter. Happy family. Well done. And mom's helpers. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have returned to Britain to celebrate the King's Platinum Jubilee, but they are having a hard time portraying the appearance of a happy couple at the festivities. The fact is that the Dukes are avoided by almost all members of the royal family, and the crowds of fans press the spouses not only with applause, but also with ownership. Experts and eyewitnesses have also confirmed that there has been no interaction between the Sussexes and members of the British Crown, making the couple feel very tense. On Friday, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle attended a Thanksgiving service held at St. Paul's Cathedral. The women appeared to the meeting ahead of Prince Charles, Camilla Parker Bowles, Prince William, and Kate Middleton, and when the main heirs to the throne did show up at the event, they awkwardly hid their eyes from the Sussexes, avoiding any contact with them in any way. It's worth noting that Keith and William sat severe for Meghan and Harry, who were seated next to Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie and their husbands. By the way, the Yorks were perhaps the only family members who greeted the Sussexes warmly. However, when Prince Charles arrived at the church service, he hardly looked at Harry and Meghan once, but Kate Middleton of Wales greeted with a happy smile on his face. By the way, there was also no interaction between the Cambridge and Sussex couple. At the end of the celebration, Harry and Meghan only had a chat with Zara Tyndall and Peter Phillips. The royals are known to have gone to a reception with the Lord Mayor at City Hall after the service, but Meghan and Harry did not attend either the lunch on Friday or the small family reception after the Trooping the Colour Parade on Thursday. Prince Charles, Camilla Parker Bowles, Prince William, and Kate Middleton, Princess Beatrice and Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi, Prince Edward and Countess Sophie of Wessex, Zara, and Mike Tyndall, Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank, and Lord Frederick Windsor and his wife Sophie Winkleman met with the Lord Mayor. Sources say that Prince Harry and William's relationship is still strained. The final rift between the brothers came in March 2021, when the Sussexes gave a candid interview to Oprah Winfrey, in which Harry also said that his father, Prince Charles, stopped answering the phone. But insiders have repeatedly noted that Sussex's special bond with his 96-year-old grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II, is still intact. When the Dukes arrived in the kingdom before their trip to The Hague for the Invictus Games, the prince noted that he was very happy to see the monarch. It was great to be around her again. It was so nice to see her. She's in great shape. I just want to make sure that she's, you know, protected and surrounded by the right people, because right now home for me is here in state, Harry explained. The royal family reportedly visited the Derby and Epsom on Saturday before heading to a platinum party held at Buckingham Palace. The Sussexes, for obvious reasons, were not invited there. <laughs>